Peanut butter and jelly. Captain's log. Quarantine, five ever. Day 23. It was a super busy day, not a moment for tea. And I keep programming late into the night, typing like a lion with all his might. This morn, I woke up and made peanut butter and jelly. I've been programming all day. I keep going like the telly. Now I'm trying to figure out a data type for verse. My stanza CSS, padding and margins are intense. I'm not trying to be a hero, hey. But I'm writing this in a JavaScript array. I don't know if there's any more I can say, other than that I'm okay, and this has been an okay day. No wait, I'll add this. I wish everyone pure bliss. Captain's Log Quarantine Sir Surge Day 24 I'm ready to jump into my bed like a big dinosaur. I'm dressed. I'm wearing my favorite workout clothes. I stretched left and right and fluffed up my pillows. For tonight, I prepared a Bill Bryson audiobook I adore, even though I'm already so sleepy that I could snore. I will listen about the history of the world, about all the mysterious things and places we explored. This is how I go to sleep every night. The book will slowly play until daylight. I learn so much from online lectures and audiobooks. But these days, I can focus on my good looks. Oh, how I miss working out at the gym. But I'm still working hard to be slim. Let us all be of good cheer. Quarantine will be over soon. That is clear. Citizens of the world. Yesterday, Bernie dropped out. I didn't even try to wait. You can't place this much weight. And what were we expecting? It has always been like this, hit and miss. It is time for all to rise. Become a citizen of the world. In your own hands, with your own mind, seek knowledge and triumph. Let the name of this new nation be Earth. May the citizen be called a human. The power is in your hand, so near, rooted in every audiobook you can hear. And you have to learn to rise. You can't near the skies without your eyes. When you have learned enough, you have to turn around and teach. Yell from your mountain, scream, dance, and preach. The promise of freedom, reason, and peace is in our hands. It is our masterpiece. Education is fun. It only ever seems hard because one is trying to learn too much in too little time. The only way we can fully learn is by inheriting knowledge from the world's most beloved heroes. This inheritance begins by following in their footsteps first and continues when we break away to resume where they left off. Rise, rise to the mountains before you. The only way is to go up, to grow up, to grow all the way up until we each become a great being. Same as those before us, same as those that are sure to rise. Open your eyes. The time is always now. Captain's Log. Quarantine. Day 26. I eat with metal chopsticks. I stopped using forks to munch my porks. I don't even know how long ago it was. So long ago, I forgot the cause. I own two metal chopsticks, and they work as good as fingers. I use them to eat my salad, to scoop out jelly and peanut butter. I kid you not, I even use them as a little cutter. A dull stick is just fine to turn a sausage into. And of course, I stir many a tea or protein brew. I do not miss the dangerous forks. The ones in a blue moon. I wish I owned a spoon. I write. Captain's Log, Quarantine, Day 27. 
Ooh, I waited to write until 11. It seems late at night, but this is when my rhymes take flight. I admit I am ready for bed, but I'm just going to sit here instead and wait for my poem to go ahead. Nah, rhyming is not always easy. Sometimes you just got to wait and take it easy. Wait for the prime rhyme, the top of your mind, climb. And then, finally, when you get there, you sit, read, and stare, feeling like the poem is a little bare. But what can you do? It's late at night, and you are not really feeling very bright. But you still have to write, so that's quite all right. This is how I begin my night. I write. Cogitate and percolate. Captain's log. Quarantine. Day 28. It's evening and it's late. Time for another poetic update. I sit here and yet again cogitate. It actually feels pretty great. I look forward to my little poetry date. And I always try to really concentrate, turn everything off and meditate. Let all those rhymes percolate. Let all those words decorate. Poetry is a universe in itself. They won't always let you write what you are trying to say. I just want to rhyme something funny, write about weather or how it's sunny. But each poem has a mind of its own. Each one is a kind of a milestone. There is a thousand ways to get to the end. But it all depends if the message is what you intend. Artist and Art Captain's Log Quarantine Day 29 I spent the day doing graphic design. Making art and poetry is quite fun, though with the aid of computers, easily overdone. I've been doing this for so long that I've learned that on computers, Brevity is the mother of invention. I'm a huge fan of the Unix command line, of the various little ways to get things done. Graphic design takes a different path. It takes a while to switch between the two. Programming languages is where I spend most of my time. It's an in-between world, betwixt the two. I've been programming music and art, it turned out not to be that hard. At the end of the day, what matters is the masterpiece. It matters not if it comes from computers, music, or art. So as long as you finish what you start and use your heart, you are an artist, and what you make is art. Computers are slow. Captain's Log, Quarantine. Day 30. I've been fixing bugs all day, and I feel dirty. Now that I've fixed them all, I must admit, I had a ball. But computers are slow. My CPU is slower than a barbecue. <laughs> I tried to build a rhyming dictionary, but it came out as an 8 megabyte web page and nearly erase the internet. In computers, everything is really bad. But this never makes me sad. I'm glad. And now, I took a shower and smell great. My only wish is that I already ate. Captain's Log, Quarantine, Day 31. I've been programming all day, but now I am done. I coded colors, design, music, a whole ballad. But now my mind has fixed its aims. 
on a salad. I've been trying to invent one that tastes really nice. One that someone could even eat twice. And I did, as I always do. Just add strawberry jam, a dollop or two. No need for dressing. It tastes like a blessing. Just squirt some jam, mix it up, and bam! Iron Horse Captain's Log Quarantine Day 32 I thought about my bicycle, my trail, the morning dew. When there is no gym, I get up real early and ride on through. It's magical out there, seeing the world from the other side. People stuck in traffic, and here I ride. I discovered modern architecture of the highway underpass, little woodland parks, endless fields of grass. Five miles out, there lives an angry goose. At seven miles, deep in summer, angry skeetos on the loose. Ten miles out, there is a ninety-degree turn, and emptiness follows, nothing but deep green fern. Fifteen miles out, a whole new city, two new parks, and the road gets gritty. At twenty miles, the real adventure starts. You better have water and some street smarts. And if you keep going forward, you'll arrive on a pier at Lake Erie. At first, you'll feel pretty weary, until you realize you're 30 miles out from your bed, at which point things will get pretty mad. Hope you have your trail mix, because you're going to need it to find your way back and keep pushing those pedals. It will get dark soon, but upon your return, you'll fall into your comfy bed with a long, dramatic swoon. Rise to the greatness. Days pass by quickly, but as all the clocks tick away, we mustn't keep our minds at bay. We each have extraordinary powers and we can expand our knowledge in just a few hours. All it takes is a video lecture or maybe an audiobook. You don't even have to look. Hours add up, day by day, building a new passageway. It is knowledge that sets us free. And our inheritance from great beings is the key. We mustn't forget that everyone needs to learn, not merely listen, but break out of their prison and rise to greatness when theirs is the turn. It is within us that each great being should return. It is how the world grows. It is how you get your turn. So rise, rise to their height, inherit their might, shine the brightest of light. Yours is the future, yours is the fight. Poetic Flight Captain's Log, Quarantine Day 34 I finished a big program, but I'm ready for more. So I'm writing a poem, and it's always very hard, because I never know what it's going to be about. One moment I'm mighty, serious, and athletic. Then I sit to the poem, and I lose that aesthetic. In my early twenties, I wore a Blues Brothers suit for office work. But even that didn't work, because I added cowboy shoes and a huge buckle. Not a day passed when I didn't get a chuckle. Later it got even worse. 
I wear leather pants and a matrix coat. I fit into my coffee shop like a mountain goat. Being serious is just too darn hard. I don't have the might. Okay, that's enough for this poetic flight. I'm done writing, y'all. Have a good night. Every now and then. Captain's log, quarantine, day 35. I'm not sure that the end of quarantine will ever arrive. So I'm preparing to write enough poetry to fill a hard drive. I think I shall begin writing about cats, and then complain a bit about bureaucrats. When I'm done complaining, I shall pick something more entertaining, like perhaps musing about lowbrow art, and then carry on babbling about someone smart. Maybe a scientist, or a philosopher, like Descartes, or maybe a colorful leader, like Napoleon Bonaparte. Then, when I'll run out of things to babble on, I will jump on my bicycle and set off at dawn. I'll bring my notepad and a pen and come up with a new idea every now and then. Everybody counts. Captain's Log, Quarantine, Day 36. Today has been an interesting mix. We have to be strong and go far and long. We can't sit around looking at the ground. We are each a hero and none are zero. Everybody counts. Care for each other amounts. It amounts to happiness and cheer and all the wonders we hold dear. I miss old programming languages. Captain's Log Quarantine, day 37. I can't believe that seven only rhymes with eleven and heaven. Every ten days I get stuck rhyming those two words. It is just about as fun as petting birds. I was writing Bash this afternoon. I'm so full of energy I feel like a loon. I was so tired at eight yesterday. I have no idea how I will fall asleep today. I wrote a non-capturing Perl regular expression and said, Gosh, I miss the old Perl, I miss CGI, and I miss Ed. What has the world become after abandoning modes? And how strange have become our codes? Using SAS, written C++, to make CSS? What a mess. And beyond that, with async await, JavaScript has become a heavyweight. I always tell people, if you make it for the web, use the language of the web. Then they look at me accusingly, parading Python, PHP, or Dart, maybe Java, amusingly. Come on, people, this is not our first rodeo. Time took out Pearl with a torpedo. This is war and those who fall behind lose. If you write for the web, use the language of the web. Your utilities will hang around longer, and your accomplishments will be that much stronger. Amazing Diet Captain's Log Quarantine Day 38 My salads are working great. I have lost even more weight. I can't even count how many I ate. It is a marvelous diet of incredible proportions. I don't check my calories or even my portions. I just make a salad once or twice. And with strawberry jam, it tastes like paradise. And yes, I still continue improving and experimenting. Today, I added jalapenos for a little spicy augmenting. It is a strange and magical thing, but sugary jam and jalapenos are king. It's not all sugar and spice, as yesterday I cried. I added and ate a whole onion so angry, 
I almost died. So it's not just strawberry jam anymore. Blueberry works just as well, maybe even more. To all the diet people out there, join me in my venture. Add a spoon of jam and taste the adventure. Tomato with sprinkles. Captain's log. Quarantine. Day 39. A vegetable juice out of line. The tomato with sprinkles was born of accident. When making my salad, this is how it went. The salad bag tore, and some of the salad went on the floor, but a fistful fell into my tomato juice and decorated it with sprinkles of produce. It's hard to recommend, but I must say, it tasted great, and I'll drink it every day. Flight and Light Everything is all right, except for our flight. But had we been given infinite light, our wings would fail in flight. What gives us the right to learn and rise to height is the limit of the duration of our light. What makes it precious and worth the flight is precisely the limits and duration of our light. It is by our limits that we look to light. Had we been given infinite flight, our intelligence would fail to light. Unbreakable and unlimited. We are born to run our fingers through infinity. Be it Wright Brothers, or Yuri Gagarin, or Galileo Galilei, it is our right to touch the greatest of heights, and it is our privilege to cheer for each other in triumph. We have no flaws, no ugliness, no weakness, no limit. Be it Tenzing and Hillary or Victor Emil Frankl, nothing can stop us. There are no bars thick enough. There are no bars strong enough. We are the captains of our souls and the masters of our fate. However, there is a culture that we must never let go of. The culture of love of wisdom. The culture of inheritance of knowledge. If we are tricked to reject wisdom, and if there is no teacher or parent or friend left to remind us, then all will be lost. Your work will not set you free. It is a lie as old as slavery. Your teachers can only remind, but they cannot reach into your mind. Fight for your right to knowledge. There is no university. There is no college. You have to use your heart to learn. Only you can do that. Without inheritance of wisdom, you will become cursed to start at zero. And as magnificent as your battle will be, you will only reach a path that was walked countless times before. You must start where the greatest minds left off. Trickster Fool Think of a trickster, a real bad fool. What a great robbery it would be if your parents sent you to college and teachers sold disconnected snippets and called it 
knowledge. And wouldn't it be convenient if you could choose your next batch? Wouldn't the trickster rejoice had you called that a choice? And then at the end of the day, when hard-earned money was taken, you wouldn't even be shaking, even though it was worse than a break-in. Think of a trickster, a real bad fool, that took away your very own school. The moral of this story is that you should think through when someone offers to teach you. Education requires that you learn on your own. That is something that teaching can only postpone. Yearn to learn. Did you know that we can't grow unless our lessons connect together? We learn the way we navigate cities. If we leap from one city center to another, we will not know where to go or what to do. None of the roads will make any sense. To divide knowledge into subjects and encourage cramming and memorization and force remembering over understanding. That is not education or knowledge. We can no more leap between subjects than hobbies or families. What connects two things together is as important as the things themselves. We only learn when two connect, and then the two connect to a third one, and next one to no end. We need a pleasant, memorable, unbroken chain of curiosities that we can slide up and down when need be. Disconnected snippets that we know not what to do with are not useful to us. School is not for us. Run, child, run from the bus. Don't let them put you on a school bus. Tell your parents school is crazy. And anyway, they shouldn't be so lazy. You will need all the games and you will memorize no presidential names. You demand a trip to every national park because you will not spend your life in the dark. You will need every audiobook ever made and only then will you go through life unafraid. Amazing Grace As I woke up this morn, I knew my recreational programming schedule will be torn. I put on my slippers and I shuffled downstairs and began slowly sorting through all my kitchen wares. For today is my spring cleaning day and I will have little time to play. I wished and washed and sloshed and swished. In the end, all my cleaning sponges looked squished. To complete my mission, I had to update my fire alarms. So I grabbed my letter and put tools under my arms, my bendy scissors and my rusty screwdriver that looks like I stole it from a scuba diver. And I climbed my three little steps. All the while, flexing my triceps. When I finally made it to the top, the little screw wouldn't fit, so I got down and poked it with my mop. I said, this is a job for my power tools. I need my drill. This ain't no job for fools. And I cannot describe to you with what amazing grace I made that hole and fireproofed my place. As I was making my way down, I almost felt like I earned a crown. But when I reached the bottom, I found a screw. I must have dropped it, for it was brand new. But in the end, I made it all work and muttered, Guess I'm not such a dork. Now. Now when I look up and tilt my head, I can see it. 
slowly blinking red. At the center of our being. At the center of our being, we each have a collection. It makes us unique, but we never lose our connection. As with all things in life, it's too easy to get in strife. We have to protect what makes us unique. If you fail, your future will be bleak. With all things we do, sometimes the bad guys slip through. This is what we need courage for, to look them in the eyes and slam the door. The unique collection at our center is our power. It transforms and evolves hour after hour. We start with just the ocean, skies, mountains, stars, earth, and Mars. Maybe flowers, gardens, kittens, dogs, horses, and frogs. But then it grows. Call it soul or spirit, personality or vitality. It becomes beauty, endurance, authenticity, nobility, love and dignity. And it keeps growing. So as long as you love yourself. It creates leaders, protectors, guides, teachers, dreamers, adventurers, explorers, and discoverers, intellectuals, humanitarians, philosophers, scientists, astronomers, dancers, athletes, bodybuilders, chefs, blacksmiths, and makers, musicians, poets, sculptors, photographers, and filmmakers, artists and designers, hackers and programmers, genius, visionaries, founders. You have to protect what makes you unique at all cost. If you start letting go, you will become lost. And many will come, and many with care and kindness, and they will try to change you in their blindness. You cannot grow up if you start letting go. You need an unbroken chain. You need that flow. You have to learn to say that it's either you, the one who stands and is true, or you are through. To grow up into who you need to be is your right and your dignity. To let bullies push you around is to fail and falter and run aground. Decades, decades after they are long gone. Do not let go. Do not take their turns. Do not change your view. You must aim to become worthy of you. Whether you believe in heroes or that we are only human, it is the same height, just maximum of our might. Push and stand up and aim up and rise. Open your eyes. It is the only way to become wise. Fight for who you are, because in time that fight is also for who you need to be. For who you need to be to be strong and healthy and unbreakable and worthy. I could talk about them all day. Somehow, Wednesday turned out to be the tiniest day. I was quiet all day, slowly programming away. I've been thinking about my bicycle, birds and rain but mostly working on my new website domain. My bicycle trails have been calling to me all week. I prepared my bicycle and I'm ready, so to speak. There was much rain today. It will take a few more days before I pedal away. It's not always about the adventure. I love how all the spring trees smell, how the birds sing in the morning, how the air is crisp and new. I never set a plan as to how far I will ride. 
I just get on the bicycle and enjoy the outside. Every once in a while, I perch upon an overpass, scribble code, or just watch the cars sometimes. There are many memorable places along the way. They are all very tiny and hidden away. Old graffiti, sculptures and parks, abandoned railway. I could talk about them all day. A warrior is she that thrives and triumphs wherever she be. A warrior is she that thrives and triumphs wherever she be. You cannot be broken. You must use your misfortune to light your way. You can learn anything you want. There are no smarter. They are just actors with a handful of fragile lessons crafted to impress. There is nothing that can break you. There are no stronger. Look to the source of the pain. It comes from innocence. Nothing rooted in innocence is ugly. All lessons that come from being tricked add up to make you more beautiful. Enable your insight and foresight and fuel your authenticity. When the regrets come at night, that's just your brain asking you to think harder, to comprehend your beauty in full. No one can trick you, not for long enough. So don't be scared. Memoirs, audiobooks, lectures will show you how many better people there are. We all have to enlarge our worlds daily. Audiobooks and lectures will show you that all you have met thus far were just the same type of person. Do not be afraid to rise. The people or person you have long thought about exist. But before they can see you, you have to rise and shine and be seen. Don't be scared. Those who will use your love, innocence, endurance and generosity against you have long been lost. They are blinded and fractured and damaged and broken. They hold no power over you. If their attacks continue, they will grind themselves to dust. And all the experiences that will be left in their wake will make you stronger and better. Battles make you stronger, smarter, more beautiful. You are a warrior. That's the oldest name for it. A warrior is she that uses the harm that came her way as energy who understands none can stay a child and all must grow and enlarge their worlds. A warrior can never be damaged or hurt. A warrior learns. A warrior resists tears in the rain, just like she can resist weakness. We live in a fragile world full of fragile people with fragile egos. They speak fragile advice with fragile words from their fragile hills. A warrior does not wait to be taught. A warrior learns fastest on her own. Learn in the sequence that fits you best. Learn at the pace that helps you most. Push the dark imaginings back and rise. Move your hand and push up and stand up. Get ready to walk and then run day after day, slightly longer. And then lift your weight the way you learn to run and then lift for longer and never rest. And then, with your sweetest audiobook, step. Step up and rise up to no end. This is the life of a warrior. Nothing can crush you, 
Nothing can hold you. Don't you see? Everything makes you stronger. Everything makes you fight longer. You are a warrior. Become a great being. If you want to change, you can't continue doing the same things you've always done. If you really want change, then you are going to have to alter your course now. If you don't fight back, you will always lose. And if you stay in the dark, you will only add to the darkness. There cannot be a compromise between good and evil. A compromise only takes from the good and only gives to the evil. Your office window is not a substitute for a call to the wild. Your next promotion does not actually make you a greater person. A vacation cannot set you free. It is not a substitute for nature. Dressing beautifully has never made a person truly beautiful. Waiting for that perfect someone will not help them notice you. Trusting that someone else will help you is just another way to delay. And just getting out there is not enough to be understood. And going out, following friends, can only put you on somebody else's path. Life is not hard. It only gets complicated when you follow. Because by following, you just end up in places you don't understand. You must lead. And you must keep walking forward, your own step after your own step, in your own direction towards the things that move you. Only then can you be truly moved. It must be the correct combination of books, poems, steps, events, summers, and epochs. Do not try to hurry. Do not change roads. Only move up. Only think and envision and grow. That which leads you to greatness, to your freedom, to your nature, requires truth. Walk your own path at your own pace. Only the correct key can set your mind free. The others who seem to have it all right often get lost on alien paths and merely put on a happy face. While it seems like you are trapped today, you are not. This is just an illusion. Look towards the car keys. That is all it will take. Grab the keys and go. It will be difficult at first. The toxic buildup that is keeping you from getting up right now takes three days to crumble. It is a heavy cage. But there is a way, a simple way. Grab the keys and go. I-275 South, merge on to 75 South, and take it all the way down. Florida Keys, U.S. Highway 1. If you live in Florida, then you are headed for Michigan's Upper Peninsula. If you live west, then your destination is all the way east. It is not the destination. It is the journey, my friend. Take your time. Watch the cage crumble and fade as you go. Only the important things will stay, and you'll get to see yourself again, and you'll get to be free again. You will resume where you left off. 
A life of bondage is not worthy of you. Life is not meant to be a cage or cruel or frighten you. You knew this as a child, and you let that slip away, not even noticing when it went. It is your right to resist being pushed into places that you don't want to be in. It is your right to reject conditions that you never agreed to, that you were pushed into. How else can the universe be worthy of us? How else can our lives be beautiful? Heaven and paradise are real, but they are now, right now, now. How can people love you when your own love for yourself is slipping away? You have to go. You have to accept the responsibility for your health and dignity. You don't have to make it all the way, not the first time. And you don't have to leave your phone behind. You can call this therapy or a vision quest. You can call it a road trip. You are not allowed to live in a cage of whatever constitution. That will make you ill. It comes to you naturally to take care of your body. But your mind also requires care. When you reach your freedom, you'll know what to do next. It can be another trip, east or west. If you feel trapped, the universe is darker for it. Take a week or two. Forty days is best. You can call it quarantine. Unless you clear your mind and focus on what is important, on you and those worthy of your care, you will lose it. You will forget the beautiful person that you truly are. You will fall from heaven and forget about paradise. And life will turn into a black and white TV show. You must take care of your mind. If there is no one else that cares about you, then look at this poem. I care. I I'm speaking for you. Grab the keys or bicycle or comfy shoes and go. Go and never again let go. Your health is important. Your well-being is important. A human being is meant to learn. A human being is meant to rise. You are meant to be filled with wisdom, with joy and love of life. You are meant to laugh, truly, fully laugh. Listen to me. There is more. You are meant to become a great being. Our extended family. There's a very special group of people that many have forgotten. Our intellectual foremothers and forefathers. They bring us gifts wrapped in the primitive art of writing text on paper. It's frequently all they had. It was the only way to reach us. They are brilliant and healthy and unbroken and triumphant. They are full of light more than history will ever tell us. Nobody who outlives an empire will have their history shown for the lovely thing it was. This served to protect them and it failed to erase them. We must never allow ourselves to merely listen to history because those are always writ by prevalent powers. It was their job to erase them. More modern philosophers had the same problem. Our dear friend, dear Frederick, and what a warrior, was smeared by the Nazis. 
He was so powerful that everyone wanted a piece of his might. Friedrich Nietzsche hated what Nazis stood for. Today, one of the great modern philosophers was under attack. It deeply hurt and frightened her. But her classrooms rose for her with nothing but love and continued admiration. We are tasked with bringing the light of our hearts and resurrecting those who passed, not by merely understanding their books, but by understanding what they were trying to say. And it is okay to understand them in our own way first, it takes time to befriend someone from a book across time. Yes, all we have to go on is text and paper. But we know they were just like us. They were all too human, friendly, and of good cheer. If they made mistakes, these great beings were not staying for long. They rose and they took their miserable failures to create gifts of prevention for us. These gifts are complex. They are as complex and nuanced as you and I. It takes hard work to inherit gifts this powerful. The only way to unwrap those gifts of wisdom is with admiration, friendship, and love. Schools teach us to see great beings as these synthetic monoliths of concrete. But nothing could be further from the truth. Because all these great beings, they were once kids and teenagers. They had heartaches, dreams, and hopes. They were just like you and me. But they invented ideas that they cared to share. And they rose to the challenges of leadership to preserve them. Those ideas are our intellectual inheritance. And here is my attempt to name a few. For your pleasure. Angela Davis, Avita Ronell, Ayan Hirshi Ali, Ayn Rand, Frederick Nietzsche, Beloved Hapatia, Immanuel Kant, Simone de Beauvoir, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Martha Nussbaum, Mary Wollstonecraft, Rene Descartes, Socrates, Silvia Federici, Soren Kierkegaard. Harold and Wally. Bicycling some years ago, out thirty miles away, along a road and an ancient highway, I found an overpass where I could perch upon, and I discovered I wasn't really alone. I figured it was a huge love story about a boy named Harold and a girl named Wally. She was a bookworm, a hero, and a graffiti artist, and Harold loved her because she was the smartest. Wally fell in love with Harold as she knew he was a poet with a heart of gold. In 1980, some 40 years ago, the two adventurers gave it a go. They set off for center state, and that became their longest date. In all their walking, it never rained, and it never got too sunny, neither complained. They walked holding hands together for a hundred miles. Their adventure was amazing, nothing but smiles. When they finally arrived at Mount Pleasant, Harold quietly gave Wally her present. It was a little book of foolish rhyme that Harold wrote over a long stretch of time. They both just happily turned 57. Their life together is pure heaven. Both are super smart, extremely young, and very strong. Their sweet love for each other is lifelong. They still do their Mount Pleasant walk, holding hands for days, sleeping in until nine o'clock. Harold makes really, really good vegan lettuce wraps, and Wally is a master at reading maps.
They've been to all kinds of interesting places, and they always arrive with beaming and smiling faces. Here is where I took the photo a few years ago, just in case any of you guys want to go. Convergence Every way of thinking about the world brings us closer together, despite what we are told. There is just one little thing to keep in mind. We have to leave all the bad ideas behind. Exchange of ideas came a long way, but we still need to eliminate foul play. Because not everyone is educated, and without wisdom, life gets very complicated. Misinformed people are easily swayed. They are often unprepared and very scared. If we build to remove their fears, they will love us to tears. The most powerful early tool is the audiobook, wisdom delivered in a way that's hard to overlook. It is private and comes with no shame. It can take a person from poverty to a hall of fame. And the best type of things to listen to are memoirs or lectures that enlarge a world view. We must stop bad education from tearing us apart. We each have to learn and become smart. This day of wisdom and peace that we yearn comes closer each day that we learn. Authenticity While not everything can be planned, authenticity and learning go hand in hand. Some lessons can get pretty tough, but we'll fix us, sure enough. When life gets sad or feels no good, it may be something you misunderstood, and our views will shift and will convert the bad into a gift. Pretenders can't learn this way, always in the dark, be it night or day, they walk an alien path, darkness and wrath. There's nothing there to fix. It's all an incomprehensible mix. To live on a spectrum opposite of devious makes each day connect with the previous. And as days add up, they make you stronger. And your steps travel even longer. Each day turns into gifts and rewards. You stop being played and create your own chords. Authenticity is a superpower. It will help you rise and you'll never cower. Day after day you become more powerful. This is how we become truly beautiful. It will help you finish what you start and your life will become a work of art. Maximum over minimum We must always wisely choose maximum over minimum because the minimums will attack our mind and body. When hoping to live life to the fullest, we have to choose the big things very carefully. Health is an example of a big thing. Everything we do must stand in support of it. Time is a big thing. Everything we do must count. We must frequently ask, is this harming or helping me? We must frequently ask, will this matter in six months or next year? We must ask, what are the regrets of my older self? Because only you can judge yourself. And you must grow in wisdom and age gracefully. Do not miss the point of life. You are meant to become a great being. You are to search and find the light of your life and discover a way to contribute to wisdom. 
Big things. My friends, as mighty as we are, we can only do one thing at a time. Once you take care to choose the big things well, the one thing before you is what the big thing will depend on. Do it well. Small things will sneak up on you. And I am so sorry about that. It is the job of our teachers to help us, but today there are very few. You have to accept the responsibility. You must fight for wisdom at all cost. In the absence of teachers, you must become your teacher. It is your right. If you fail to educate yourself, People will use you. They will use the best of you. Your generosity, your kindness, your might. They will pay you less and trick you to thank them that you still have your job. They will replace you with younger people come your golden age to save a dollar. Come a tragedy, they will use it to make you work harder. All of this is hard to see, and it brings so much relief and pleasure. It feels so right to choose, but you are so much more than a worker. You must ask if the path that you are on is worthy of the magnificent being you are. You are meant to become a great being. You have to climb to see the big things. Even as a great being, my friends, always look to the big things. Do not waste your precious time to achieve that which crumbles. Look towards real things and things that really last. Love yourself. If you don't care about yourself, People will get scared of you, because if you get hurt, you will hurt them too. You have to watch yourself, be compassionate to yourself, ask, is working too many hours a day helping or harming me? Are office walls helping or harming me? Does loneliness help you? Does hiding really help you? Overwork and office is unhealthy. Take those skills and build. Take it outside. Let nature nurture you. In her silence, she will help you remember who you are. You must learn to treat your body with compassion. You must learn to take great care of your mind and please make every day count we are so beautiful such powerful dreamers above all love yourself don't be scared if everyone seems scary that's only because scary is all you've ever met I've met them too. I, I saw what they can do. How sure of themselves, how forward and how blind. But if you spend your life in hiding, they will win and rob you of everything precious. So rise, begin taking care of yourself and begin your search. Not a search for mere friends, but a search for the extraordinary. It is simple, my friends. The only way to find the extraordinary is to become extraordinary yourself. If you got hurt before, then you already have come a long way. You now hold a gift of wisdom, a foresight that can spare suffering. No one is to take love of life from you. No one is to rob you of joy and laughter. Grab an audiobook, 
Get to know the local museums. Learn. Morning fog at Nordhaus Dunes. Oh, it was cold that morning. The sudden change came without warning. While the sunsets are over the sea, the sunrise must rise from behind the dunes. There are no dunes taller than these. They are ancient, born of frozen seas. The deers were the first to rise. To them belong the sunrise. There is a place where the dunes part by some unknown arc. The deers come out, it is their lake, no doubt. When the sun finally made it, the warm air rolled down the dune. The symphony of the ancient forest, perfectly in tune. Then the birds rose, and their breakfast followed. Two eagles came by to keep an eye from the sky. My beloved seagull friend and I rejoiced another perfect morning. My seagull friend's name is Bob. I call them all Bob. I had difficulty telling them apart, but I sure got their names right. Seagulls are the kittens of the sea, and they are all very mighty. The Jogger now is the time. It is always the time. You are never too old, and you are never too large. But whoever you are, you are always too beautiful. Jogging is a wise teacher. It teaches bodybuilding. More importantly, it teaches that our bodies are powerful. But they do not adapt as quickly as our fancies strike us. There's one fantastic way to jog. Measure how long you can run and how long you need to rest to run that long again. Make the jogging number one minute and the rest number two minutes your friends for the spring. Rest five times, jog four. Don't be too hard on yourself. Jogging is difficult because you should dance first. Dancing and walking are lovely at making you a jogger. But if you are in a hurry, as many joggers are, a bit of rest and jog tango will do. So rest jog, rest jog, rest jog, rest jog and rest. Don't push yourself too hard, but you have to run each day. Some days you can just walk, so as long as it is three times longer than your jog. Above all, be good to yourself, because you are beautiful to me. And do not forget that you can put blueberry jam into a huge salad to make a new kind of fruit for health nuts. I know you can do it. I believe in you. I really do. Unique Greatness Each day we must learn, and what we've forgotten, relearn. Our life depends on clarity. Our visions must be sharp. A lesson learned begets a wisdom to create a kingdom. Our might comes from knowledge, and you can't find that in college. Life is too short to learn in slices. Leave them to their own devices. You are a powerful being. You learn fastest on your own. As few teachers there are, so there are but a handful of books. It will be hard work to fill all the notebooks. But your mind is unique anyway. There is no substitute for your own way. At first, it will be gibberish. At last, they will read it feverish. You must not be tired. Your mind cannot be stressed. 
You must resist what they desired. Tell them you cannot be hired. You are not a dime a dozen. There is no other like you. You have to tend to your own mind. All the forgotten lessons remind. There cannot be anyone like you. Learn to reach your own breakthrough. Set yourself free from all the silly string. You are not just a little thing. No retreat, no surrender. You are meant to become a great being. We are not robots. We are not robots to be taught. We are humans powered by inventive and original thought. This is why life has no instruction book. If it did, it could only ever tell us where to look. For the sake of this poem, let us imagine that this book does exist. Here is how I imagine it would read, and let me start with the opening creed. If someone is attacking you, call for help until it comes. If school is treating you unfairly, go hang out with the principal. You need to build your content of character. Your body of wisdom is a key to happiness. You must grow all the way up. You are to become a great being. You are beautiful. You are beautiful all along. It would point to learn from the greats as they manage to lift impossible weights. It would also say that we are delicate and that our minds are extremely intricate. It would add, hey, you cannot grow up in places that way. You have to find your own place in the world and you have to quit doing what you are told. Above all, it would state that you are free and full of beauty and searching for wisdom is your duty. Helping the world really learn. You can leave. You don't have to ask the teacher. If they are not teaching you, they can only delay your education. If school is wasting your time teaching you nothing, then that is a crime. And if you stay, you are foreshadowing. We have something now, my dear friend. We have internet lectures, audiobooks, and startup incubators. No teacher can teach you better than failing at your first startup. No teacher can bring you more wisdom than failing at your first startup. You can go. So as long as you can do it better yourself. So as long as your aim is greatness. Take your books and go. Don't forget your friends. Since you are the first to rise, you will be the new teacher. Prepare your audiobooks wisely and do not forget YouTube lectures. You'll need investors. And although all your parents put together make quite an investor, you need to approach the pros. And listen carefully, as they will be proud to help all of you. People believe in authenticity. Investors know what kind of student stays and what kind of student leaves. All those failures that were crushing you in school are worth their weight in gold when building a new one. Research homeschooling and unschooling. Bring your friends. If your parents keep yelling, find someone more worthy of you. Parents are not gods. They make mistakes. They are scared of responsibilities, scared of unknown. Don't let the yelling get to you. They need to learn to communicate their ideas better. Whatever fails you, your friends, your school, your parents, it means you get to go, or they get to go, or you won't be able to grow. Lack of education is a terrible curse brought on by bad schools, bad parents, and bad friends, first it will make you blind, and then 
you will lose your mind. That's probably how slavery worked. Whatever is interfering with your real education is attacking you, cheating you of wisdom, freedom, independence. You cannot agree to this. You have to rise. Rise against stupidity, bondage, and slavery. If everyone failed you, then the universe has called upon you to become your teacher. When you grow up, walking out of that charade will be your favorite story to tell. Your listeners will be the same age you were. The books you loved will become the books they'll love too. You will set them free. Help them to wisdom, help them to independence. Learn so that you can become a successful entrepreneur. Find your start at startup accelerators. Go there early as failure is a powerful teacher. Show them your hunger. Show them how much you have learned on your own. Set yourself free. A life without wisdom is slavery. Teach your investors what a good book really does. Help their employees to discover knowledge, to hunger for more. Would you, as a powerful, great business person, take the diploma you're working on seriously? Seriously? Or would you see a child waving a little flag, hoping to squeeze in if there is room for one more? Why do you need teachers anyway? They can only stand between you and great beings. Find a road less traveled. Find a more grassy patch. Bring a picnic basket, audiobooks, and video lectures. Let that be your classroom. And let your future be made by you. Learn at your own pace, in your own sequence. Any lecture worth watching is on the internet now. That is what the internet was created for, helping the world really learn. Riding the Trail I like riding around on my bicycle, but today I felt like an icicle. I just got back from this year's first long ride. I feel cheerful and mighty satisfied. All the cute creatures are still there, and thankfully still no signs of angry bear. Riding alone, I reminisced about a warmer time, when a car slowed down and screamed like there was some crime. I had no idea what they were saying, but waving their hands, it was a danger they were portraying. But I was like, oh, whoop de doo who knows? And in the next moment, I had to take off most of my clothes. I have never been in such great rain. It was like standing next to a burst water main. I loved it. The rain was fragrant, fresh, and warm. I could never call that a storm. The sun came out instantly. I was like, okay, rain, thanks, bye. And then I had to hang out all my clothes to dry. The 13-mile ride back home was full of mud. I had to lift my legs and wheel my bike across a flood. I'm so glad no one will ever know about this. But still, these are the memorable moments that make me reminisce. Whoop de doo at Nordhaus Dunes. Some adventurers wrestle bears, others run away from their fathers. I bemoan the lack of Wi Fi. That is, until the night comes about, at which point all the wild creatures come out. I've heard stories of owls swooping down from the air just to rip whatever is left of a man's hair. <laughs> then there are the occasional mad deer, always shimmy-shammying around like they had a beer. 
The coyotes are especially frightening. They come in groups, flashing their eyes like lightning. One time, I tried to turn on a flashlight. As it turned out, to all the big spiders' delight. Let me tell you, it takes a man with a lot of brass not to scream when a spider crawls out with a huge glowing ass. <laughs> Once, an older lady from a nearby camp went to get more booze from her car and then misjudged her distance and walked back too far. I was sleeping on the ground in my tiny tent, and then all of a sudden she started yelling out in her lost torment. Of course, in the middle of the night and woods and my sleep, she didn't sound like a lady, but rather some huge creepy creep. She found her way back, and I'm sure they partied hard, but not knowing what made all those screams, I slept on guard. Porcupines. Oh, you've never seen one like I did. It was huge, covered in spikes, and really fit. It could outrun a car or two, probably bite a tire and chew. But then I came across a sign, and it turned out that the biggest creature was not the porcupine. I was always pretty happy that none of the creatures that bite could actually take me down in a single swipe. But the sign read, Beware of bear. And that, to me, was the biggest scare. Friday and I Wherever I went, Friday magically followed. There always seemed to have been a tree that was hollowed. And the moment I looked at food, he knew dinner was going to be good. Wherever the raccoons came out at night, Friday was always there, my fat spirit guide. Over at the little torch key at Veterans Beach, with easy access to water, he lived up a palm tree with his furry wife and tiny daughter. Once I got lonely and threw a little tortilla all the way up there. He popped up and it looked like he smiled, I swear. Over at Ludington State Park, at the Jack Pine Hiking Campground, I woke up at 3 a.m. hearing a strange sound. He was trying to pull out my hamburger buns, probably to feed all his furry sons. The bag was tied up in a tree. Nothing could stop him, because he was free. I got out of my tent and delivered his late-night bite by tossing it into my cranky neighbor's campsite. The whole Woodland family knew that eventually I had to go back. Friday left me a little footprint on my pillow to help me pack. I was staying up in the trees on top of ancient dunes. The only light was that of stars and the moons. I called them Nordhaus Skylands. But if you go out there, be ready for his smart little hands. Bring a travel lock to secure the zippers in your tent. And remember, Friday loves you as a friend. He means no ill intent. My dear readers, we may each need a few weeks of wilderness in our life. So start slowly packing. Buy a backpack, bug spray, and a knife. And just keep your adventure pack by the door. If life ever gets you down, smile and head for that Lake Michigan shore. You can park at the Nuremberg Trailhead. And don't forget to bring a little bit of stinky cheese and a piece of stale bread. Epoch by Epoch
Like steps on a mountain, each epoch stands in support of the next. Like the pages of a journal, together they hold the sacred text. We learn, we may fail or triumph, and the next epoch follows. But every new epoch grows from the one previous. We can't leap from one place to another. We can only move up, graduate up, or build up, or step up. To leap is to stay a child in an aging body. To go up, to grow up, and carry on to no end is to become an adult. In our youth, we must learn to stand our ground and anchor ourselves to something that moves us. As we age, having followed that path, we'll be standing upon our own mountain, a great mountain of personal wisdom, where once only a direction lay. These mountains rise with each epoch in our life. Every once in a while, we pause, to bring all that we are together, higher. Epoch by epoch, we ascend. We can already see the sunshine, but our journey comes with no end. This is a simple life. First we conform and then break away, we become wise, and later in life, our wisdom transforms into enlightenment. It is a road of adventures, books, poems, and inspirations. It has tears of sadness, but in return, we grow stronger. What it is all for is to live a life of simple dignity, of rising when we fall, of learning when we get tricked, of protecting our bodies and minds and growing stronger, of adding to our existing body of wisdom. With each epoch, we climb over what we previously thought were our limits. As we get up and stand up, we reach a new plateau. We rest we take in the sun of this new height and get busy building higher and higher. None of us begged to be born. We were nothingness. And temporarily, all these atoms came together to give us ourselves. And eventually, we'll return to our nothingness. And the atoms will disperse to become parts of other beautiful things. While we are in this state, however, the first and foremost order is to thrive, to grow, to expand, to rise, to build, and to ascend. Whether we know it yet or not, the road that we are on is one. It is the same road that our 90-year-old selves will wonder about. They will go up and down the epochs and ask questions. There will be some regrets, but we do have a chance to solve them now. There will be enough triumphs to bring blinding light to all the sadness, and the beautiful memories will wipe out all the unimportant things. All that stands in the way of our growing up must be pushed aside. Growing up is our life. We must grow up, rise up, all the way up. Each and every epoch ahead demands this. Our minds require wisdom. Wisdom fuels our decision-making. And our choices dictate all our life ahead. Life is precious. It is to be lived in dignity and authenticity. And you are meant to become 
a great being. Enlarging your world. We must take time to enlarge our view, and in everything we do, we must first think things through. Above all, to thine own self be true, but also, your own world should fit you like a good shoe. With each step you took, your mind grew. With all new things, we never really start anew. Wherever we go, whatever we go through, we learn and our wisdom evolves as we continue. Sure, sometimes it feels like we don't know what to do, but when you get sad, the whole universe becomes slightly more blue. We may not know exactly what you are going through, but many of us have been there. We too got stuck until we grew. Many great beings get hurt, but all plow on through. You are not alone. In our own thoughts, we sit right next to you. Please push through the pain and look through the zoo. When all is writ and said and done, we all still need you. There is a blinding beauty to who you already are. I wish you knew. With each step forward, you become a brighter star, and we love you. Don't worry, so as long as to your own self you stay true, it will all pass. And when looking back, you'll say, I grew. None who wandered were lost. We often think of consequences to mistakes, but consequence does not pick. So as long as we keep to our own paths, all our actions cast changes ahead. In mistakes, lessons await. In good deeds, we find family. In great adventure, we'll find mountains. In great achievement, calm and peace. In darkness, we will find light. In isolation, we will find hugs. So as long as we keep to our paths, what we shall find will make us stronger. However, if we dare so to diverge, all we have cast will be lost. Perhaps no shadows, but certainly no light, no lessons, no sweetness, no might. By switching paths, we'll find fewer wisdoms, and far more things that don't fit us. We'll also find a force of opposition. It will keep our minds tired. It will be unclear why life seems strange, why everything takes so much more to see, why we seem to lack confidence, or how everyone else has so much of it. But the most troubling thing, my dear friends, is how easy it is to diverge. There is a place for leaps of faith in life. They are quite sacred and as beautiful. But to fill in a stranger's blanks or trust that the others know what they are doing, to listen to good advice that considers you not, to give something up of yourself and not know why, to go to a place because everyone went there, to bow because all others bowed, that is not sacred, sacrilegious maybe. You must never follow, you must always lead. Even more troubling is how it all collapses, not with a bang, but with a stupid sick whimper. How were they supposed to know? How was I supposed to know? All the blame for what others did to your sacred self somehow falls back right on you. And then it turns out your lesson is all over cheap paper bags. Everyone has been through this and none were the wiser. All those confident faces and smiles 
they were faked. And the more convincing they try to be, the less they are in pain. When someone is putting you at risk, take a split second to imagine them saying, How was I supposed to know? And stand your ground. You are not to follow. You are to lead. Let them have their stupid games and drinks and temporary junk. You go to the DIA. Take some notes and splurge on clay. Find a gallery worthy of your works. Resume where Rodin left off. Instead of filling blanks, show the world the shapes. How can your other half recognize you when you are traveling on some other path? What you may not do is to start at the bottom. All the cheap novels, they described starting at the zero. Start where all the heroes left off. Read a handful of novels and move on to their memoirs. Your life depends on knowing what it is and where to start and what to avoid. It will get lonely, yes. You'll be lonely because you don't drink and don't do stupid things. You'll be lonely, but you'll be you. You will shine your own light, and you will be seen. Get up. Step up. Create and speak with art, and you'll talk with the world. Grab pencils, trace with an office projector, and bring your tortillion along. At the gym, dance. Your way is the only way. You may get lonely, but not for long. Try to help people learn what you have learned. Become an assistant, a tutor, and a substitute teacher. Keep track of your Peace Corps application. Just keep adding to it and keep resending it. They probably don't even read it until version 50 anyway. It gives you time to revise and refine the ideas. To begin walking your own path is to enter the grand path of pursuits of excellence. Everything on your own path will add to you. There will be no limit to how far you can travel. Stay on your own path. Avoid generic advice. Read memoirs. Keep moving up and always try to move faster. Learn about new things. Expand your knowledge every day. If it's something you don't understand, find an audiobook about it. Stay sharp. Stay fit. Endurance training goes well with audiobooks and love of wisdom. Others must have no influence on you. It is not their life. It is your life. Move at your own pace and in your own sequence. Make your 90-year-old self laugh at how amazing you are.